we have finished the discussion of the demand and supply. Now, goes to some special topic in microeconomic theory. The first, we will talk about the uncertainty. So here, we will talk about the fair gamble and expected utility hypothesis. Second, we will talk about the risk aversions, how to measure the risk averse of people. Third, we will talk about the methods for reducing the uncertainty. Finally, we will take a look of a special case, a state preference approach to make choice under uncertainty. Okay, so that's basically it. Explain how people make choice under uncertainty in other ways. So first, let's introduce some basic concept: fair gamble and expected utility. So fair gamble means that the expected value of the gamble is equal to zero. Say you are playing a bet with your friends, you flip a coin. Okay, if you get head, you will lose. You will lose one dollar. And if tail, you earn one dollar. So in this game, the expected value of x is equal to zero. Then in this case, this is a fair gamble. So if, okay, this is not minus one and one. This is minus one and three. Then in this case, this is unfair gamble. So another concept is the expected utility. Expected utility is just the probability of some event with the pop with the utility stick to that event okay say the expected utility of x1 is 0 and expected utility of x n is 1 okay and the probability that x is equal to x1 is pi and x equal to xn is 1 minus pi and the expected utility okay expected utility of x is equal to pi times the expected utility of x1 plus 1 minus pi times the utility of xn. Okay, so this is the way to calculate the expected utility. So similar in the utility theory, in utility we want to maximize the utility and here with uncertainty we will maximize the expected utility. So what is the meaning of maximizing the expected utility? Okay, so here, if you are given two gamble A, so the gamble A will give you x2 with probability A, and x3 with probability 1 minus A, and the other gamble is B, okay, they will give you x4 with probability B, and x5 with probability 1 minus B. So the expected utility hypothesis state that you will choose A rather than B if and only if the expected utility okay A times U X2 plus 1 minus A times U X3 is greater than B times U X4 plus 1 minus B times U X5 okay so this is the expected utility hypothesis. People will select the choice that maximizes the expected utility. So next we are we're going to see take a look at the concept of the risk aversion. So usually if you have one me say one million, okay. And if I tell you I give you a bag. This spec can give you 5,000k with probability one half, and 1 million and 500k with probability one half. We will take it. So usually you you won't take it, although you can see that the expected value of the gamble is equal to 1 million. Okay, so this is the fair gamble. You pay 1 million to play this game. Expected value of of this game is zero so this is the fair game but most of the people won't do this this is because in the in the spirits of the person of the people always okay we always have a have a characteristic that we are risk averse risk averse means that we will reject the fair gamble so how to model in economics in economics we will write an indirect utility function 
So this is utility and this is the wealth. This is indirect because wealth will not bring you utility but you use the wealth to buy goods that give you, gives you utility. So how we model it? We draw a concave utility function. So here we can see that if this is 1 million, this is the utility you generated. And if this is 500k, this is 1.5 million. Then the expected, you link up these two points, the expected value is also 1 million. And this is the expected utility of these two points. So here you can see that the utility of certain value is equal to expected value of that value. Okay. So this is the risk averse properties. Well, in fact, so this is just directly, so this is a direct consequence of an inequality called Jensen inequality. Jensen inequality state that if x is the random variables, so here we have w, and if the function is concave, then the u, then the expected value, the value, of, the value of the expected value, is higher than the probability times the value. Okay. So Jensen inequality state that the utility of expected value is higher than the expected utility. Okay. So we finished the concept of risk averse. So next we will talk about the how to measure the risk aversions. So now we know people will try to avoid the risk. So by paying how much they are willing to avoid the risk. So it depends on some sort of numbers. Okay. So the first first one is the absolute risk aversion. Absolute risk aversion is defined as negative u prime prime w to write derived by u prime w okay so the second order derived by the first order since we know that this u prime prime is negative so we put a negative sign here to make it positive so this the usefulness of this absolute risk aversion is that we can calculate the insurance premium so the insurance premium is the premium that one is willing to pay to avoid the risk okay so assume you are having a game and the expected value of the game is zero. So fair game, okay. Then if you take the game, this you get the expected utility of well plus H. Okay. And you are willing to pay something to avoid it. So W minus P. This P is the risk premium you are willing to pay. Okay. Well, we know that okay, UW is higher, higher than the expected utility. Therefore, we can minus something to make these two to equate. Okay. So here, for the left hand side, we can use the Taylor expansion to expand it. So this is equal to E times UW plus h times u prime w plus h squared divided by 2 times u prime prime w plus add all the higher order terms so I use the quadratic approximation just that this is equal to u w plus e h times h prime w plus e h squared divided by 2 times u double prime and for the right hand side okay I use the linear approximation. I will get u w minus p u prime w. Okay, then we can see that left hand side equal to right hand side. We will generate that u w plus e x square two times u prime prime w. So this is zero. Expected x is zero at the assumption, and this is the variance. So I keep it. So this is equal to u w minus p times u prime w okay then this two term can be cancelled we can see that p is equal to negative 
e x squared divided by two times u prime prime w derived by u prime w. Then this is equal to some constant k, capturing this variance term times the absolute result versions. Okay, then we can see that the premium is a positive relation with respect to the risk. So that means if one person is more risk averse, he or she is willing to pay more for the premium. So he, he or she is willing to pay more to avoid the risk. Okay. So this is the so-called absolute risk aversions. So besides the absolute risk aversions, we have another called the relative risk aversion. Okay. So relative risk aversion is equal to so it, it is equal to W times the absolute risk aversion. So this is equal to minus W times U prime prime divided by U prime. The reason why we put the reason of putting the wealth here is that we are not going to see the absolute change in the wealth value. So if we put the W here, we can turn all the change in the wealth is in the relation of proportions. So here, okay, one very famous utility function in the uncertainty economics is U is equal to wealth time raised to power 1 minus a derived by 1 minus a so so here let's try to calculate the absolute risk averse and relative risk averse so u prime is equal to w raised to power negative a and u prime prime is negative a w raised to power negative a minus 1 Okay, so we can see that the absolute risk aversion is equal to negative u prime prime divided by u prime. This is equal to a over w. So this is decreasing absolute risk aversions. But how about relative? Okay. So rr is just equal to a times r w. Okay. So this is equal to. Uh, equal to a okay so we can see that decreasing absolute risk aversion can be constant relative risk aversions okay so here we can see that if the utility function has this form we can model the constant relative risk aversions so most of the literature used to use this CRLA utility function standing for constant relative risk aversion because this is the benchmark and the easiest utility in the uncertainty case.